those of you who've attended previous symposia of the Institute know that uh, you've heard me say before that one of the perks of being director of the Institute is that I get to have people that I really want to hear at this symposium. It's a wonderful event and they've been fantastic in the past and we look to a wonderful event today. Uh, sometimes, well typically in past years, I'll stand up here and give a little state of the Institute summary but I'm not going to do that this morning because we actually have a town hall meeting scheduled for 4 o'clock this afternoon, and I will do it then, and we'll also have some opportunity for Q&A. Uh, we'll have all the uh, deputy directors up here as well, and you can just have at us and uh, get any of the information, ask the questions that you want. It has been a really dizzying year for the Institute. Uh, we've done our sort of usual academic things in terms of hiring faculty, in terms of holding a... Uh, uh, competition for another round of interdisciplinary postdoctoral fellowships and also uh, new appointees for Stanford in, uh, interdisciplinary graduate fellowships that are affiliated with the Neurosciences Institute and it's been very gratifying to see the proposals, the creativity of the community and the ideas that have come forth and the people that have come forth really wanting to get involved in this kind of research. But in addition to that, we've had uh, three major things going on that have required a lot of effort from a lot of people in this room and also from the XCOM. Uh, the, you know that that building is rising over there now. There's actually steel out of the ground after we've been working on it for three and a half years. And uh, one of our major undertakings of the past year was actually to, um, uh, to come up with a slate of investigators and laboratories who are going to go into that building and occupy it. And that, has, that took a lot of time, uh, a lot of very careful, considered effort and work on lots of people. And then the final design of laboratories has been going on. So that's been a, uh, that's been a major challenge for us. Uh, and we've also been very busy um, raising funds for the building. We've obviously been somewhat successful or the trustees would not have let us go forward with that building. Um, but we're still, we still have a ways to go and we'll be working hard on that as well. The other big, really big thing that we've done this year is gotten uh, phase two of the Big Ideas in Neuroscience program underway. So those of you who are familiar with the program know that this is a, an attempt on the part of the Institute to build on the very successful seed grant programs that have been uh, in place here at Stanford now for a number of years, first modeled very successfully by BioX, and sort of getting that interdisciplinary energy and bringing different concepts to bear and different frameworks and different tools on fundamental problems in neuroscience has been very successful. And we've been trying to figure out, all right, how do we scale that up? How do we harness that energy and scale it up? And the big ideas in neuroscience is our way of experimenting with that kind of process, that kind of scale up. And three teams were announced um, to, who, are, who won the phase two competition of the big ideas. This is after seven teams competed in the phase one uh, 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 stage. And the three teams for phase two are now about six months in and we'll be looking forward to hearing results and seeing how this is going in the, in the coming year. So it's been, a, it's been a, a really busy year, a lot of things going on. We look forward to another busy year in the future. But today is really a day to uh, relax and enjoy the science that's going to be presented. Uh, this year, unlike previous years, all five of our speakers are from outside Stanford. And I think that's a, that's a really great thing to give our community the opportunity to hear from these people. We sort of span the waterfront of neuroscience all the way from uh, how neuroscience can uh, apply and should be applied to social policy, which Martha Farrow will talk uh, to us about today. Um, to basic science of cognition, which Carlos Brody will talk to us about, uh, to the, uh, how, in, how we apply engineering techniques and principles to understanding navigation and brain mechanisms from navigation, which Martha Fair will talk to us about, uh, to uh, the genetics of disease, which all of us are very interested in, and we're very pleased to have Matt State here from UCSF to talk to us about that today and uh, a talk sort of unusual here at Stanford but needs to become more common uh, on the glymphatic system, a poorly, under, a poorly an underappreciated, a poor, uh, underappreciated system that's responsible for cleansing the brain and operates primarily at night, and we'll hear about that from Mike and Nettergaard. And if any of you need yet another great health excuse to get a better night's sleep, Mike and is going to give it to you today. 
So we're delighted to welcome these speakers here. We have two other special events today. We have the Sammy Quo Awards, which will be given at 115, which are recognizing our graduate students and postdocs who've published really excellent papers over the past year. And that will take place uh, right after lunch. And then at four o'clock, we have the town hall meeting. Just a few bookkeeping things. There are uh, coffee and water along the sideboard outside on, on that end of the lecture room. There are restrooms out and to the right in that direction. We will have regular breaks and we'll have uh, lunch here at noon. And just as an extra special feature that Stanford has brought us specifically for this symposium, there will be a test of the Stanford alarm system at, f at noon today. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, all of your cell phones, those of you who are hooked up to the Stanford alarm system, cell phones will start going off and you might want to turn the volume down on them, though I don't know if there's an override or not for emergency alarms. may just be a lot of buzzing in pockets, but that will happen at noon today. And we'll try to keep to time out of, uh, you know, respect for some people who aren't be able to be here for the whole day and want to time their, their visits well. And I think Tanya is probably going to act as timekeeper, which she's done very effectively in the past. So with that, I will get off this stage and I will introduce Brian Wandell, uh, who's professor of psychology, and he, is, he will introduce our first speaker. Brian, the floor is yours.